available for sale less ending inventory gives the cost of goods sold right that's going to be our calculation that you got to basically put into the tax formula and in this case if this was the first year the beginning inventory would be zero if there was no prior inventory we don't really know the purchases because i wasn't tracking that what we do know is the ending inventory right i know the ending inventory is this amount is that what we came up to <laughs> yeah that's the ending inventory and so and so uh and then we also know the cost of goods sold now because i can pull that from my sheet over here and say that my cost of goods sold is currently at the 3409. So this is at 3409. So using that, we're only missing the purchases. We can basically back into the purchases, right? So we've got zero in essence plus X uh, uh, minus the 2013 equals the 3409. And we can basically do our algebra to solve for x and that basically means that in our in our purchases we're going to say this is going to be equal to you know this plus uh this and then this is equal to this plus this so if i double check this my beginning inventory is zero my purchases is that if i sum this up this is the amount that's available for sale and then my ending inventory is that and if I subtract this out, I get to the 3409. So you can, you can, you know, populate your worksheet because basically you will know, in essence, the ending inventory and the cost of goods sold, and you can back into the purchases. Now note that if it's your second year or multiple years of doing your, your, your uh, Schedule C, then you will have beginning inventory. How do you know what the beginning inventory is? It's the ending inventory from last year. So if you look at last year's return and you had ending inventory of $1,000, then you, again, you could do the, you know, the similar calculation, but then accounting for the $1,000 beginning inventory, which means you'd basically just subtract out. If I do my algebra here, it would be this, this minus that, right? And so if I double check it, there's the $1,000 plus uh, the purchases gives us the amount available, which is spelled wrong for sale, less the ending inventory gets us to that 3409. So in essence, if you can get your ending inventory, then you can make your, you can make your journal entry in uh, the, your, your QuickBooks system, which can give you basically the cost of goods sold that's being calculated within the QuickBooks system. And then you get the beginning inventory because that's the same as last year's ending inventory. And if you have all that, you just have one unknown in your little algebraic equation, which is the purchases that possibly you could back into. So that's kind of the easiest way that you're making some assumptions and whatnot to, to deal with this whole thing. And that way you could basically just focus all of your time on trying to cover the amount of inventory like most new people might be doing in terms of units to cover the sales uh, although again, as you, as you get more sophisticated, you're going to want more accounting needs for internal uses because this matching system doesn't give you the best, the best results to, to know which products are giving you the highest profit margins and whatnot. So we'll talk about some other methods in future presentations.